Local loops generally are two pair twisted copper wires that provide just enough bandwidth to provide voice services. However, optical fiber in the last mile is becoming much more common as converging technologies, voice, video, and data, to, to residential homes become a reality. Note the increase in optical fiber installations and decrease in POTS copper wiring starting in about 1999. The outside plant is organized so that the individual lines aggregate into pools of local lines which aggregate into larger conduits which together feed into a central office. In most areas, this organization follows what's called the Serving Area Concepts, the SAC plan, which was originally developed by Bell, Lab, by Bell Systems. According to the SAC, the cable that runs from a subscriber's demarcation point to a telephone pole or underground conduit is called the drop wire. The drop wire connects the subscriber's home or business line to a distribution cable, which gathers multiple drop wires from a neighborhood. Distribution cables then lead to a service area interface, or SAI, a facility in which multiple wire pairs terminate and connect to a cable called a branch feeder. Sometimes SAIs are called terminal boxes or terminals or ter terms or cabinets or boxes. Main feeder is a group of wire feeders that are connected to the backbone of the telephone system. Main feeders are responsible for connecting a group of branch feeders to the central office. Branch and main feeders, like distribution cable, are installed at least six feet underground in conduits made of a thick plastic sheathing. This conduit may be encased in concrete. The main feeder conduit, usually a fiber optic cable, enters the CO or central office from underground at a cable vault or a cable entrance facility, a secure environmental controlled room at the central office. Let's take a look at the telephone company's central office or CO side of the local loop. The main feeder conduit, usually a fiber optic cable, enters the CO from the underground or a cable vault or cable entrance facility, a secure environmentally controlled room at the central office. From the cable vault, the larger cables are separated into smaller groups of wire that lead to the main distribution frame, or MDF. Each line enters the central office, terminates at a punch-down block, one, uh, at maybe several punch-down blocks on one side of the M MDF. On the other side of the MDF, lines exit a separate set of punch-down blocks to eventually connect with the central office switches. Racks or relay racks are typically heavy metal frames designed to hold equipment such as switches and keep equipment stable. Racks also ensure simple interconnection between different pieces of equipment and pathways for cabling going to and from this equipment. Finally, racks position equipment so that te technicians can easily work on them. Part of a central office's inside plant is the switching equipment. Switches provide dial tone along with other tones such as busy signals and call waiting signals to telephone customers. Switches also interpret dialed numbers and determine how to route calls to the destination. They also establish calls, supervise and maintain calls, and track information about calls for billing purposes. They also perform automated, uh, automatic line and uh, testing and maintenance. And examples of the primary functions of switching equipment at a central office includes dial tones, customer and phone number identification, call setup, call routing, call supervision, and line testing and maintenance. All these features are performed by the switches at the central offices. Every central office must have reliable sources of power in case of power failure so that switches can operate and customers will continue to have telephone services. 
For intermediate emergency power, the CO relies on banks of batteries. After a short period of time, electrical generators can begin supplying emergency power. A local office is the central office that is closest to the customer. Local offices terminate customer lines and are responsible for customer services, including dial tone, call setup, and call services such as call waiting. Local offices may also be called end offices because they are the last switching location in the central in the network before the local loop. A tandem office, moving up this, this uh, chain here, a tandem office is a central office that handles calls between multiple central offices. Tandem offices are connected to each other via what's called trunks, or lines which are called trunks. A, trunks, a trunk is a transmission route between switches that typically have, has a great deal more capacity than a feeder. Tandem offices generally do not uh, connect directly with subscriber lines. Instead, it serves as an intermediary switching point for all calls that do not start and end at the same local office. Class 1 CEOs, or Class 1 central offices, which are a type of toll office, are also known as, regio as regional offices. There are only a few large Class 1 CEOs in the United States. A call that stays within a single Lex local office can be handled exclusively by that CO's switching equipment. But if a call leaves the central office's serving area or is between parties who, who, who substrate to the different Lex services, a connection between carriers is necessary. The connection between carriers occurs along trunks between tandem or toll offices. Rates for using another's car another carrier's facilities are regulated by the FCC or the state PUC depending upon whether the services are interstate or intrastate, and these rates may frequently change. North America is divided into several geographical regions called numbering plan areas, or NPAs, most commonly known as area codes. The format of an NPA code is capital N, lowercase a, b, where N is any digit 2 through 9, lowercase a is any digit 0 through 9, and b is also any digit 0 through 9. The next part of any telephone number is its central office prefix, or NXX number. NXX number follow the same format as the NPA codes, NPA, NAB, where N is any digit 2 through 9, A is any digit 0 through 9, and B is any digit 0 through 9. If two phone numbers share the same, the same NPA and NXX number, you can assume that their local, uh, their local loops terminate at the same CO. The final four digits in the North American numbering plan indicate the subscriber's line. Within a single NPA NXX, each four-digit number must be unique so that calls can be routed properly. In summary, the public switch telephone network, or the PSTN, is defined as the collection of local and long-distance providers' facilities and connections that are available for public service and, more recently, data communi uh, communications. Common carriers are entities directly involved in supplying regulated telecommunications services to the public. The local loop, or last mile, is a connection between the subscriber and the nearest central office. This concludes Module 4 on the public network. P please take quiz four and I'll see you again when you open module five in which we'll explore the customer's premise equipment and applications. See you then.